Welcome to Jurassic Park. Ah, Jurassic Park, one of the most influential movies of all time. Resurrecting giant killer lizards and placing them all at the apex of every predator proved to be a terrifying and incredibly successful formula. Due to its massive success, a floodgate of dino questions started popping up and they needed dino answers. What if dinosaurs escaped their cages and hunted down guests at their park? What if they did that again, but this time Chris Pratt was in it too? What if a T-Rex got loose in a populated city? What if Chris Pratt was in another dino situation, but this time there was also an active volcano? Well, with every question answered, there were thousands that were left in an unanswered void. And soon, the movie market opened up to a frenzy of dino demand. And among that frenzy, in 2004, the Sci-Fi Channel heeded the call and gave us an answer to the question, what if radiation caused life on an uncharted island to mutate and evolve into raptors, and a group of terrorists were chased onto that island by a team of Navy SEALs, but they all got stranded there and bullets didn't do much damage to the raptors, so many of the humans died, and they needed to find a way to escape the island, and also there's a volcano there that's about to erupt and kill everyone too. It was a question that we were all asking, and Sci-Fi gave us the answer that we so desperately needed, in the form of their original movie, Raptor Island. Raptor Island is sci-fi at its absolute best, giving us a silly story that's taken incredibly seriously and filled with terrible graphics and acting that end up being so perfectly bad that they become just pure brilliance. So don't forget to like and subscribe and a huge thanks to my YouTube members. I love you. Now kick back and enjoy as we watch the masterpiece that is Raptor Island. As the opening credits play, we see a plane crash land in a storm, but then we cut to 40 years later. With these kinds of movies, it's always fun to try and predict how relevant something like this is, and with a 40 year time jump, I'm guessing it's going to have very little to do with the overall movie. In the present day, we meet Hackett, a naval officer tasked to take down a terrorist who's been wreaking havoc and has captured a fellow agent. The naval team sets out to sea and board a terrorist ship and give us an incredibly nauseating shaky cam gunfight. It's hard to tell exactly what's going on, but I think a few people die, and then the main terrorist named Azir takes his hostage agent and abandons the ship. The naval team chase after them, and they all end up on an undocumented island. But just before the boat lands, we see a strange set of footprints in the sand. I wonder what could have made those. Hmm? Raptor Island, what creatures are you hinting at with these mysterious footprints. You've got to love the forests that they choose for this island. It just looks like they went to some random park. Like, it's definitely not an island climate or island foliage at all. And also, Hackett shows some tracking device that's apparently pointing to the hostage agent somehow, but they just graphicked in the little target acquired, and it looks just so perfectly terrible. While the naval team hunt down the terrorists, two terrorists stay behind to sabotage the boats, but this movie is done messing around because the raptors finally make their appearance and apparently they're impervious to bullets. The gunfire alerts a few of the navy guys and they head back just in time to stop one of the terrorists from escaping by shooting his boat, and absolutely blowing it to smithereens. A firefight between the Navy and Azir's squad breaks out, and all of Azir's men end up getting killed, so he just flees deeper into the island. Hackett frees the hostage agent, so we meet Jamie Cole, the other main character of this movie. What the hell happened out there? Their reunion is cut short because it's time for even more raptors. These things are completely unharmed with most gunfire, 
and they take out a few of the Navy guys pretty easily, but they're not impervious to explosions, so that's good. Seeing a raptor blown up by a grenade is something that I didn't know that I needed to see before I saw this movie, but now I realize that this is what movies were made for. If I didn't know any better, I'd say these were raptors. <laughs> Which is impossible. Raptors have been extinct for over 100 million years. Are you sure about that? The team's radios also aren't getting any signal, and their boat is destroyed now, so they're completely stranded on Raptor Island. Hackett says that the team missed their initial window for extraction, and the next one will be in the evening at 0300. Our next and final chance is tomorrow evening at 0300. But that doesn't make sense because 0300 is 3 in the morning, and he clearly said evening, so I'm starting to think Hackett might not really be a military man. He's got something to hide. They travel deeper into the island, and hey, that's the plane from the intro, so it's got something to do with this movie. A trio of raptors are chowing down on a body, so the Navy team unloads on them, and this time their bullets actually manage to kill one of the raptors. It's so funny to watch how little the raptors care that they're being shot. We see the bullet holes appear on them and a little blood coming out, but they're so content to just eat and bleed, I guess. And also notice how their blood trickles down in perfectly symmetrical ways. Almost like the special effect was just split in two and copy and paste it to create a 3D model. <laughs> Oh man, I love this movie. The raptors finally run away, so Hackett and Jamie move in to take a closer look at the crashed plane, and Jamie gets a real good scare. Ah! Ah! What? Skeletons. Her doing a double scream because of skeletons. It's so funny to me. You just don't see adults actually scared of skeletons anymore. I don't know. It's one of those things that just tickled my brain. What? Skeletons. They end up finding some strange containers, and Jamie theorizes that the radioactive material inside of the containers infected the island's soil and mutated the animal life there into becoming dinosaurs again. So, we've got science to back up Raptor Island now. It's nice to see that it's grounded in reality. The volcano at the island center starts to erupt just then, but then it cuts to black for a commercial break, and when we get back, they don't talk about the volcano at all, so I'm not sure what to make of that. They end up taking shelter in a large cave, and it's here that I realized that this dude playing Marcus is the same actor from Alien Apocalypse where he played Chuck, and I love that movie, so this dude's got a great track record so far. Hackett goes out to find some fresh water while Jamie decides to head deeper into the cave because she hears some strange noises. A little ways into the cave, Jamie finds the raptor's nest on a small island in the middle of the volcano, surrounded by lava, so this is the raptor island of Raptor Island. Oh my god. So that's bad luck, but that means that Hickett must have much better luck in his exploration, right? Well, no. While gathering water, he sees a few raptors heading straight for him. He hides behind a tree only to watch as a giant dino stomps in and starts chowing down on those raptors. I'm not sure what kind of dinosaur this is, so I'm just going to call it a T-Rex, but I'm sure that Dino, our friendly dinosaur, could tell you what kind of dinosaur this is. Marcus gets worried about Jamie for some reason, so he heads into the cave after her but stumbles upon a tiny raptor and shows that he's got terrible aim. While the last marine is left alone, a few baby raptors try to eat him, but he just bats them away, and then the bullet that he shoots at them causes them to fly off. It's so funny. Them baby things. Marcus ends up alerting a few more raptors, and they corner him just as Hackett and Jamie meet back up. They head in to find Marcus, but he's dead, so they just find the dinos munching on his corpse. <laughs> This whole time, there have been a couple small scenes with Azir, and he's been hiding or running from raptors, but now we see that he seems to settle inside of the crashed plane from earlier, and he calls that a home base for now. 
There's also been one or two scenes with the Navy captain back on the ship, and we learn that there's some really bad weather coming in soon. Son, for the next 24 hours, I want your eyes glued to that screen. And if you see anything, anything at all, you get me immediately. I can. But the captain doesn't want to leave his men behind, so he's, he's a good dude. Back to the main crew, they head out after getting a good night's rest, and Jamie sees a bubbling swamp, and somehow she knows that a volcanic vent has recently ruptured there, so it looks like the volcano is really close to erupting now. Just, just to make this situation even more dire. A pack of raptors ambush them, and Jamie comes up with a plan for like three full minutes while the raptors just stand there and growl at them and let the humans talk and plan. It's so dumb. The soldiers decide to just kill one raptor and hope that the others cannibalize it instead of hunting the humans, and it ends up working really well. But then, for some completely unknown reason, the third member of the Hackett and Jamie squad decides that he wants to stay behind to be a distraction for the already distracted raptors, it's it's a super noble sacrifice. <laughs> then, adding to their list of plans that make absolutely no sense, Jamie and Hackett decide to walk into the swamp because they think that the water is poisonous to the raptors, and I guess they don't think it would be poisonous to them. So, they come out all muddy and stinky, and it ends up working like the predator because when a raptor wanders close it doesn't seem to see or smell them at all so it ended up being a great plan jamie and hackett head to the crash plane for a quick rest but they go inside of the other half that's across from the azir half so they don't cross paths they end up discussing their origin stories but it's nothing special so we'll just skip past that part and then they say that they need to make it to the beach before the Navy sends out a helicopter at their rendezvous time. But, of course, a big problem's going to be the raptors, and once they make it to the beach, there's not going to be anywhere to hide, so they come up with a plan to distract the raptors by setting charges and prematurely erupting the volcano to take them all out, and they also end up talking about their favorite movie in this scene. Fast and Furious. Fast and Furious. Family, 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 family. Also, I guess Azir has left that plane half because he ends up heading into the cave that leads to the raptor's nest. So, all the remaining humans are ending up in the same location. Crazy. Jamie and Hackett head inside the cave and set up some claymores, all the while mowing down raptors like they weren't bulletproof a half hour ago. But then Jamie falls through the floor and gets knocked out, so... Hackett thinks that she's dead, and he finishes setting up the explosives, and since she isn't back at their designated time, he detonates the claymores, and explosions ring through the cave, and then the volcano fully erupts. The rendezvous helicopter begins its flyover of the island and sees the erupting volcano, so he does a sweep of the island and finds their busted boat, and now he knows that the team is on the island somewhere. Then we cut back and see that somehow, Jamie's still alive, but uh-oh, she wakes up and she's stuck in a little cave with his ear, and he's taken all of her weapons. They manage to make it out of the cave system somehow, but then another eruption causes Azir to fall over, so Jamie makes a run for it and gets away perfectly fine. We also see that Hackett has been running through the forest, but apparently he's really slow because Jamie ends up meeting up with him a few seconds later. We also also see that the helicopter pilot has noticed them on his radar somehow, but I love the little fist pump reaction he does when he sees them. The helicopter lands to rescue Jamie and Hackett, but we've got to have one final confrontation with his ear. He and Hackett have a, a totally tactical gunfight where neither of them move and neither of them have effective shots at all, and it lasts just long enough for the big, not a T-Rex guy to stomp onto the beach where it gobbles up his ear in a very realistic looking couple of chomps. Then, as the helicopter is flying away, the island completely explodes and I guess gets destroyed, and we see a few raptors swimming away, and then 
the movie suddenly ends. Raptor Island rocks. It's among one of the best of those bad movies out there, and I love it even more every time I watch it. It's such a perfect movie for me. Without a doubt, it, it's a 10 out of 10. It's a 10 out of 10. It's a 10 out of 10. The movie does end with a slight nod that they wanted to make a sequel, and three years later, that hint was fully realized with an equally silly concept, but this time on an even larger scale. But Planet Raptor's going to have to wait for the next video. For now, thank you all so much for watching, and if you enjoyed, don't forget to like and subscribe, and comment below with your favorite dinosaur movie. As always, a huge thanks to my YouTube members for your extra support. If you were trapped on Raptor Island, and I was a hungry raptor, I would turn on my fellow raptors and eat them before I would even think about eating you. That's how much I love my YouTube members. But, that's it for now. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, bye.